Okay, welcome back. So we left off uh, on page 467 talking about the cryptographic algorithms. Okay, so <clears throat> there's basically two major types of algorithms for doing encryption. Uh, one of them is called symmetric, and you've used this one before. Symmetric is sort of like the same thing you have. You have a key, right? And so when you go to, to lock a door, you stick the key in and lock the door. And then when it comes time to unlock it, you use the very same key to unlock it, right? So one key does two functions. It either locks the door or unlocks the door. Same thing with our business. A symmetric key is used for both encrypting and decrypting. And that way you only have to have one key, right? I mean, if your spouse has another key, well, then they can get in the house. If your neighbor has another key, they have, you know, but all three of those keys are the same. They're basically the same key. Okay. So I talk about some of the key terms associated with this. And so let's just go through them. Uh, the first one is the Advanced Encryption Standard, AES. Uh, the NIST, the uh, re current recommendation by the U.S. government is to use this current one, the, the AES. Now, to tell you the truth, it's a little weird because the NIST standard basically says we want you to use this particular encryption, but they don't really specify the encryption length because that, that varies. You could have, you know, a 256 or a 512 or a 1024. So it tells you basically here's the formula I want you to use, but not necessarily the strength. Okay, now like the army is going to specify a strength. Cool. The key, the private key. The secret key. Of course, that those the, the private key and the secret key. Uh, all those are just you know that's the the password. That's the key. You know whatever if you type in your some sort of an encryption key like a password and it does the encryption. That very same one is used for decrypting. Cool. <clears throat> all right. So um, they talk about symmetric encryption, right? Use same key. So so what's the opposite of that? Well, the opposite of that, of course, is asymmetric, which we'll be talking about in just a minute. Um, so, right now, it's just one key that one key that rules them all. And so, here's an example of it. So, uh, I'm getting ready to write a a, a message from uh, Rachel to uh, R Rochelle. Rachel? No, Rachel and somebody. I don't know who. Alex. Okay, so Rachel and, and Alex. And so. I use a key saying, okay, the deal is go, it gets scrambled, and then he uses the exact same key over again, uh, and then gets the correct answer. Yay! Okay, so pretty straightforward. Um, <clears throat> that's just plain old symmetrical algorithm uh, encryption, rather, and there's not anything complicated with that. A little bit of history, of course. Um, back in the old days, uh, there was a thing called the Data Encryption Standard, DES. <clears throat> and from 1976, the, the military decided, and you know, that was the one they were going to use because it was super duper. And uh, it was a, a block cipher. We'll talk about what that means a bit more. And it had a 56-bit key. And 56-bit is okay. I mean, you know, that's not fantastic. But, you know, the, the key being kind of sort of small... At the time, in 1976, uh, that was perfectly okay because no one had supercomputers and no one could crack a 56-bit encryption in brute force. The problem is that um, modern computers today could do a brute force encryption in about two in about two days on 56-bit. So you know the difference between 1976 and the in the you know, the 2000s, of course, is that, hey, you know, something's something's happened here where the PCs have gotten a lot smarter. Therefore, 56-bit is no longer uh, a value. So during that period of time, they said, well, we're going to come up with a new one, the, the AES standard. But meanwhile, what we're going to do is we're going to tell you we're going to use triple DES, 3DES, which basically means you run the, the thing through DES one time, and then you run it through a second time, and then you run it through a third time. So that it makes it essentially, you know, 56 times 3. So it makes it a really, really long key. <clears throat> anyway, kind of strange. <clears throat> so triple DES was, you know, run it through three phases. You could uh, do the encrypt, decrypt operations as many times as you want, essentially. But, you know, three cents a week. And it was a stop gas stop gap measure in uh, 1997 to allow time to switch over to the AES thing. 
Okay, let's talk about AES. Um, it's based upon the uh, Rindel. Yeah, probably. I'm probably butchering these names. Um, I've already just pronounced it uh, Rindel uh, block cipher. And um, one of the key features about this block cipher is that it does not have to specify. You don't have to tell it in advance what the key size is. I could have multiple key sizes. I could have, you know, 256 for things that are not that important and 512 for things a little bit more important than that and 1024 for things that are super duper secret. Okay, I get to choose. You might ask, well, why bother to have little ones at all? Why don't we just make, you know, you know, 4,096 is the number we'll use for all of them. Well, to tell you the truth, it's it's a little overkill and it slows things down. Um, the amount of time it takes to do an encryption and decryption with the bigger keys takes more energy, more effort to, to do. And, um, you know, if you're sending something over a wire, you don't want to slow it down that much. So it kind of made sense to have a variable thing. Okay. So... <clears throat> um. One of the weird things is the AES standard is based upon a public thing, right? It's, it's an open source public thing. And of course, a lot of organizations freaked out over this. The Army was kind of in this weird boat where <clears throat> we want our encryption standards to be secret. We don't want to have open source. And so if there was a period of time where the Army said, well, no, we're not going to be using uh, AES because it's a public standard. Uh, and then they said, well, so we're going to do our own thing. Um, and keep it all secret. Shh, don't tell anybody kind of a thing. Uh, to tell you the truth, those days are kind of gone. Most cryptographic experts now believe that the open source versions are better at protecting secrets than the, the proprietary ones. So anyway, um, you know, it, the whole thing, there's two parts to this. First of all, the, uh, the requirement to make the algorithm public is one thing that kind of freaked out a lot of agencies. And then the other one is this persistent thing that perhaps there's a, a back door into my encryption. Now, a lot of this is just pure hype. You know, if, if you listen in on like congressional testimony about, you know, we need to have back doors into this encryption stuff, you can tell they have not a clue what the heck they're talking about. Okay. And so it's all hype. It's all, you know, hyperbole. And it's just a bunch of crap to tell you the truth. And because all the experts are saying, uh, no, that's not really practical. You really can't do that. But what the heck? Okay, so moving on. So that was the one key to rule them all. Now it's time for the asymmetric. Now asymmetric is used an awful lot. And basically it means it has two keys. So uh, just imagine in your head, I still have one lock on my door and I use a blue key to lock the door. But when it comes time for me to unlock it, I use a red key. I still stick it in the same lock and turn it. It's just that I have a blue key and a red key. That's it, okay? Two different keys. And you might think, well, what's the point? Well, hang on a second and we'll get there. All right. So basically it takes two to tango. Uh, I, have to, I have to be able to encrypt with one and decrypt with another. Cool. Um, but ha the weird part about this is... Um, in order for this to work, the keys have to be kind of paired. I mean, you can't just, I can't just make up, you know, like one of the passwords for encrypting is gonna be Mary Had a Little Lamb and the other one's gonna be something else, you know, uh, the cow jumped over the moon. I'm sorry, when you build these keys, they have to kind of sort of be put together so that they kind of know each other. I'm just saying. Uh, so that when you do the encryption, the, 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 in, the key that did the encryption is somehow known uh, so that the other key can do the decryption, right? weird <clears throat> so they're they're paired keys they're not completely random okay <clears throat> so <clears throat> excuse me so here's an example of using asymmetric now for asymmetric to work um, I have to give away one of my keys now if you think about that a minute go whoa 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 wait a minute wait a minute I gotta give away one of my encryption keys how safe is that? Well, to tell you the truth, that's the basis for asymmetric. So let's explain how that works. Instead of having a red key and a blue key, what I have is a private key and a public key. Okay? Now, oddly enough, <clears throat> it doesn't matter which one I pick. I can lock the door with my private key or 
I can lock the door with my public key. And knowing that whichever one I lock it with, it'll take the other one to do the unlock. Okay, so there's not like one key is used for one thing. Any one of the keys, well, there's only two, <laughs> any one of the keys can be doing for, can work for encryption or decryption. Okay. So why do I have to give away a key? Well, to tell you the truth, that's kind of a fundamental question. And one, you better be prepared to answer like in a quiz. All right. <clears throat> so here's how it works. I want to send a message to somebody. And so I'm going to encrypt it with a particular key. Okay. A private key. And my public key is made available in some sort of a thing. And rather than just call it thing, it's a public key in, uh, infrastructure, PKI. It's the term they use. So some sort of a PKI thing. Um, if you're sending email, perhaps like Microsoft Exchange, Microsoft Exchange acts as the PKI. It keeps all of the, the public keys out there. And so I send you an encrypted email you look up my public key, okay, and then you can can figure out, you know, okay, I've encrypted with one and decrypted it with the other kind of a thing. So that's you have to you have to make your public keys available. Otherwise, if you don't make them available, then no one will be able to read anything, right? Okay, cool. So that's how this thing works. Is I have to have some sort of a repository of public keys, and they have to be somehow tied to me, you know, like. You know, Professor Gray's key is Mary Had a Little Lamb. You know, that kind of a thing. It has to be known. <clears throat> okay. By the way, in real life, if you're using like Microsoft Exchange with the PKI built into the Microsoft Exchange server, users never see any of this. I just, you know, I'm composing an email. I put a little check mark where it says, um, you know, digitally sign. Or I put a check mark by encrypt or both, whatever. And then it, it automatically goes and you know does its thing. I mean, the, you don't ever actually see the key anywhere. And the guy at the other end doesn't actually see the key anywhere. It's all just done behind the scenes. But there is this need to have a public key thing. Okay, so if I'm doing, uh, if I have to distribute my public keys, I have to make them available, right? So Microsoft Exchange, that's a, a classic example. There's some others. So let me ask you a question, which is faster? To, to encrypt, well, do you figure that a um, a symmetrical or asymmetrical would be the fastest? What do you think? I mean, I'm still just using one key to make it happen, right? So it, what I'm asking essentially is, is the encryption on asymmetric more complex than uh, uh, the encryption on symmetric? And the answer would be yes, yes it is. So if you're if you're after speed. The, the public key thing slows you down several ways. It slows you down for encryption. It also slows you down for decryption because you have to stop what you're doing and go get a key, which takes time, right? And what happens if, you know, the network was down during that period of time and blah, 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 blah. You can kind of sort of imagine that, right? Okay. So that's a, a pretty decent kind of a scenario about um, which one is faster, right? Okay, cool. So let's, let's talk about an email scenario. So <clears throat> this is going to be complicated and it's going to bend your brain. And so please, you know, I, mean, I want you to stop, pause the video as long as you want, go through it as many times as you want. This is one of those fundamental things you're just going to have to wrap your head around. I apologize in advance, but <clears throat> yeah, a lot of people have trouble with this. And, you know, this is not my first rodeo, but when I've had this class before. A lot of people just, when they got to this test question and went, Oh, hell, I don't know. I'll just pick one, you know, without actually actually learning this stuff. Please learn this. Okay, I've kind of delayed talking about it enough for it to be at the good, at the 15-minute mark. So we definitely are going to be back in just a few.